Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you take a minute to subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, that definitely helps with the algorithm. Uh, this video, gonna be getting back to work on the Cobra and it is time to now dig into the engine again. Uh, last few videos, I uh, was working on the interior. Pretty much done with the interior at this point other than doing a uh, kind of final clean up and touch up to things uh, once I'm ready to get the car back on the road. Uh, so now it is gonna be time to get to work in the engine bay. Uh, so that being said, I am gonna get the camera turned around and uh, start walking through what's gonna be going on. So first thing I need to address is the uh, other end of the oil pressure gauge uh, piping here. You see this copper piping coming through. Uh, what I need to do is get it cut to length, route it. I'm gonna kinda attach it to the clutch cable there because that's a pretty good solid anchor point. Uh, should keep it off of anything of, you know, that might damage it uh, and then go ahead and get it hooked up and installed in the engine. You can see there's a fitting there. Uh, you can see the white um, sealer on the adapter fitting. Uh, so I just need to get everything routed down there, get it installed, and then I'm also going to sheath it. Yeah, I have a length of uh, silicone hose there. Same stuff I used on the uh, underdash side of it to protect it. Uh, I'm going to put that around it as well just so it doesn't get kinked, damaged, anything like that. So uh, that is next time list, getting that final installed, measured, all that fun stuff, and uh, I'll come back once that is all in place. All right, so quick update. Um, decided not to cut any of the copper down. Um, I went ahead, stretched it out, put the uh, sheathing on as planned, cut it to where I thought it would go, and then I wrapped it around a socket there. You can see, just kind of put some curls in it. One, that gives me a little bit of like flexibility for engine movement. Two, it's extra length in case anything ever happens. It needs to be cut, adjusted, things like that. Um, so I figured that just, you know, will help. Uh, the biggest thing was for like engine movement and whatnot. I didn't want to have like a tight fitting line with no flexibility. And then, you know, with the engine going back and forth ever so slightly on the mounts, it ended up uh, fatiguing over time because it is just thin copper. So I hope this will, you know, help in the long run. So I'm gonna go ahead get the fitting um, installed in the adapter that's already in the block. I'm gonna again use the uh, white ARP thread sealer on it and then I'll get it all installed, tightened down, and then uh, I'll come back to show you the final results. All right, and there we are, final installation. Everything is in its place. Next thing's gonna be turn the ignition on and uh, crank this over and see if we get pressure. And if we get pressure, make sure there are no leaks. So I'm gonna get started on that right now. All right, well, I just went through a cranking cycle, um, got it up to about 40 PSI, checked both the uh, underneath here on the back of the gauge as well as the sending units or the, the sender in the block, that uh, adapter, and no signs of oil, but here you go. You can see it will uh, pressure up. So good signs here, getting oil pressure build up just in. So got a winner there. I think that is uh, a job done as far as getting the gauge hooked up and uh, all the lines plumbed and uh, no leaks. So pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, you know, like I said, down here, no signs of leaking, everything looks good. And same thing under the dash. So uh, yeah, we're gonna check off the uh, oil pressure gauge. So the next thing I wanna address is the cylinder heads. Um, I've got the throttle body taken off here. And if you look down the ports, this is why I am doing this. Um, when I had originally installed this manifold, I knew that the uh, ports on the manifold were bigger than the heads with the full intention that I was going to replace the heads, but I also had the full intention of having this car back on the road for most of this past summer and uh, being able to drive it and did not have the uh, funding and the budget to buy heads at that point in time. Uh, so I figured I would just get through the, the summer. I know it wouldn't be optimal because you have that nasty port mismatch that you can see in there, but I figured I'd go ahead, drive it, enjoy it, and then come this winter, I would do this head swap. So um, you know, that being said, didn't anticipate having to do all the wiring I ended up having to do, so that set me back quite a bit. And now here we are, I didn't drive it at all this past summer, and now I'm down for a while, and I can go ahead and do the heads. So this is the reason I'm doing it. Um, you know, this has the GT40P heads on it currently, and then this Edelbrock uh, Super Victor intake manifold is what comes with their Pro Flow EFI setup. So 
um, big ports on this, small ports on the P-heads in comparison. Um, so I now have the trick flow heads that I went over in uh, my little up and coming video and I'll get into those in some more uh, in-depth detail once I open them up, I'm ready to install them. Uh, but those are going to you know, save me quite a bit of weight going from these cast iron to aluminum. And, you know, they should have ports that will match up better with this intake manifold. Um, I didn't want to try porting these heads with them on the engine. That just, or, you know, did not make sense. And it didn't make sense to pull them off just to port them, put them back on, and then replace them down the road. So that's where we're at right now. So what I need to do, um, as you can see, I've removed the throttle body. I've already removed the cap and wires. Uh, so the process is now going to be slowly just getting everything pulled off of this. Um, I'm going to pull the valve covers, pull the distributor, pull the intake, all that fun stuff. And uh, then I can get to work on uh, getting the head swapped. Quick update. Um, everything is disconnected. You can see the hero hose line has been removed. I removed the PCV uh, hose that was in the top of the valve cover. Disconnected the fuel line. All of the wiring is disconnected and free and the distributor is out. I've got everything just kind of sitting in the trunk of the car. Uh, so next on the list is going to be loosen up all of the bolts for the actual manifolds. I'm gonna try and pull it with the tank uh, attached just because I don't wanna mess up the flange or anything like that, trying to take it off, uh, damage the tank, anything like that. So I'm thinking I should be able to take it all off as one joined part uh, if I'm careful. So that is kind of my goal. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get to working on bolting things and uh, we'll find out if that is a success. Alright, uh, as you can see here, making progress. Uh, I had to pull the valve covers off in order to get the intake out because it's a tight fit with these P heads and that lip that they have up there. It's very snug and then with the uh, rocker covers going over that, it you know, couldn't get it out that way. So pulled those out, was able to pry it loose. Uh, so yeah, then all that stuff is off the top. Next on the list, I gotta get the headers unbolted from the heads, and then it'll be pretty much uh, pull the rockers and uh, get the valve or the head bolts out and pull the heads off the car. Also have to pull this uh, accessory bracketry off the off of this side. Uh, the other side, there's nothing. So uh, next on the list, like I said, I'm gonna try and get the headers uh, unbolted and go from there. Success, uh, as you can see here. Headers disconnected on the driver's side. This one is pretty tight, can't get it out really unless I take it apart. Passenger side, you can see it is completely gone. It has been relocated to the garage floor over there. You can see the pipe sitting there in front of the MR2. Um, but yeah, that one I was able to take it out all as one piece pretty easy. There was enough clearance on that side, it's pretty open. Whereas over here, you've got you know steering stuff and some other things in the way. Just you know, as long as I can get it far enough away from the head that I can pull the head off, that is good enough. So. That leaves me with just having a ground strap on the back of this head to disconnect. And then I can just undo these bolts and this one should come off. Uh, passenger side, I probably will actually leave that bracket on because it's only attached to the head, it's not attached to anywhere else. And I can just take that off as well. Um, I'll go ahead and you know leave it on there. That way I just know the orientation where everything is uh, for when I'm ready to reassemble. Uh, plus I'll you know, probably clean things up and maybe try and find new hardware because I think the screws in the front of it are a little corroded not looking so great uh the bolts um so yeah so uh next on the list is going to be starting to uh loosen up these head bolts and uh, get the heads pulled all right on the passenger side double check made sure there's nothing attached to the block anywhere that's going to cause an issue uh that bracket will all come off with the head right there so what I'm gonna do is uh, get these 10 bolts loosened I'm gonna do the reverse of the torquing sequence uh, so I will start with the outside working in and uh, get this thing removed. All right, well, here we are, 10 bolts later and head is off. Uh, looking down cylinders. Don't look too bad. You know, there's some marks on just from, that's from me dropping the push rod when I was trying to take the head off. Those uh, iron heads are not light to say the least. Um, but yeah, this head's out. Looking at everything, looks, decent um you know i'll do a, a better in-depth look at it uh but the engine's been sitting hasn't run in over a year now so um but yeah i mean looking at the head gasket doesn't look like there was any sign of leaking or anything um but i mean it definitely looks like that's an older gasket so 
Highly doubt that was uh, changed anytime recently. Um, you know, I don't know when this thing was last rebuilt. It allegedly had been recently rebuilt, but uh, yeah, I don't know if the heads ever been off this this engine. Well, being that they're PI heads, they were obviously off at some point in time, but they've been on this engine for a while. Um, I will say though that the push rods that came out do look pretty nice and fairly clean actually. Um, so those don't, I don't think those are OEM push rods. Those look to be aftermarket. Maybe they were put in when these uh, rocker arms were put in. Um, it does also make me question what cam this engine has, because allegedly the original builder who put the P-heads on put an E-series cam in it. Um, but I'm wondering if it was changed at some point in time along with those rocker arms and push rods. So uh, that's a mystery. I may have to uh, do a little testing with you know, the lifters, see what the lift is, see if it matches an E-cam. I really was trying to get away with not pulling the front cover off um because yeah really don't want to go down that road so but anyway one head is off i am going to get to work and get the driver's side head off all right so next up is going to be driver's side there's nothing on the front um on the back i do have one ground strap i do have to get out of the way so i'm going to remove that first and then i'm going to do the same thing i did on the other side uh start getting all these bolts out i'll start with the outers and work my way in uh just kind of the reverse process of torquing so Gonna get to work on that and uh, get this cylinder head out of the way. All right, so here we go. Passenger side is off, or driver's side. And as you can see, looks like I had a half dead hole here. Um, there's a lot of buildup on this one piston. Uh, I'll show you the head in a little bit. There's a lot of buildup on the inside of that cylinder head chamber and valves but I have an explanation for it. I understand why it happened and I will go through that here in a minute. So, I mean, otherwise everything looks pretty good. Just a lot of, you know, there, there's some buildup in all the cylinders. Like this thing was running a little rich, which it stunk. So that makes sense. Um, you know, I was running on an old Ford. There's a tune, a chip on an old Ford, you know, EFI system. So not surprised it was running a little rich and had, you know, has some buildup on the, the uh, pistons. So, uh, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. Uh, everything came off pretty straightforward. Um, again, these cylinder heads are pretty heavy. So if you're doing this in the car, be careful. It definitely takes some effort to get them up and over the side. Um, also, watch your um, your pit, your dowels. I, I don't know what, exactly what they call them, but these are your locators. There's one here, one there for the cylinder head just to hold it in place. These ones stayed in on this side. Other side, they came out uh, with the uh, gasket and head, so I'll need to pull those off. The old parts and put them back in place once everything's cleaned up so um yeah but i mean all in all everything looks decent you know i haven't seen anything too worrying other than that but like i said i found the explanation for it so um i'm gonna go through that right now so here is the cylinder head that came off the driver's side and as you can see here's the example of the dead cylinder with all of the buildup on it and again i was sitting there going oh no what is causing that you know do i have a major problem things like that. And then I remembered when I was pulling the plug wires off, I noticed one of them was pretty nasty. And here's the bundle of plug wires. And this is the one for that cylinder. And you can see, obviously, it's burned, melted there, as is the end. Uh, so this looks to be what caused the problem. This was probably following out the cylinder and then causing all of that carbon buildup and whatnot. It was just intermittent fire or something like that and uh, got the build up inside the cylinder. That's the best I can tell. Uh, that's, that's my guess as to what the cause was. I don't see any evidence of like leaking in the uh, head gaskets, anything like that. Uh, it looks to me like it was just um, you know, uh, intermittent fire based on a uh, burned up spark plug wire. So uh, it's getting new wires and everything else new so that will no longer be a problem in theory. Uh, so yeah, that was the cause of my issue. All right, so with that, I think I am going to call it a wrap on this video. Got a lot done. Everything's pretty much torn down. Uh, next video is on the Cobra. I got some things to do before I can put this all back together. Uh, going to have to clean up the block, obviously. Uh, since the head's off, I do want to verify my top dead center on my adjustable pointer. I know I've already done that a couple of times uh, with other means, but now that I actually have full access to the piston and can see where it is at exactly top dead center, I can get that set. Um, I also want to put a um, mic, or not a mic, a um, gauge on the camshaft just to see what the lift is on the camshaft that might help me validate that I do have an E303 cam in this as I allegedly do. 
Uh, so I'll probably do that, uh, just to see um, where that ends up. Um, and then it'll be uh, test fitting head on the passenger side, and then you know, number one cylinder, I am going to validate that I'm gonna have enough valve to piston clearance, which I should with this combo if it is the cam I think it is. Um, also make sure I have the right push rod length because uh, you know there's normally two versions that work with the trick flow heads. Uh, I ordered the one and it's kind of a 50-50 shot, but it's the one that I've used in the past. So hoping it is the right length push rod. If not, I can return them and uh, get the uh, the other size. That's the correct size. So uh, that is what will be coming in the near future. Once all that stuff's done, then I can start slapping everything back together. And I think once all is together, we can finally get the EFI system programmed and see if this thing starts. So uh, if you're interested in following along, please hit like, please hit subscribe, please hit the notification bell. Uh, definitely helps with the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. I do reply and read everything. Um, I also helps with the algorithm, so would not complain if you did that either. So uh, that being said, I do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.